Battle of Kambula took place in 1879, during the Anglo-Zulu War when a Zulu army attacked the British camp at Kambula. It resulted in a decisive Zulu defeat and is considered to be the turning point of the Anglo-Zulu War. Prelude Following the disaster at Lobain on 28 March 1879, Colonel Evelyn Wood's forces prepared to receive an attack by the entire Zulu Empire, of which they had only previously encountered the leading sections. Soon after dawn of 29 March, Transvaal Rangers rode out to locate the enemy Empire. The cattle were put out to graze and, after some deliberation, Two companies were dispatched to collect firewood. By 11 a.m. the rangers had returned with the news that the Empire was on the move and was to attack Kambula at noon. Wood also now received information that the Empire was nearly 20,000 men strong, consisting of regiments that had already defeated the British at Isandlwana and other battles and that many of the Zulus were armed with rifles taken from the British dead at these battles. Shortly after this the Zulu Empire was sighted five miles away across the plain, coming on due westwards in five columns. However, the warriors of the Empire had not eaten for three days. The woodcutters and cattle were brought back in and, confident that the defences could be manned within a minute and a half of an alarm being sounded, Wood ordered the men to have their dinners. Set Shweo responded to pleas from the Abaklalesi for aid against the raids of Wood's troops by ordering the main Zulu army to help them. He ordered it not to attack fortified positions but to lure the British troops into the open even if it had to march on the Transvaal to accomplish this. His orders were not followed. The Empire moved and Wood initially thought it was advancing on the Transvaal, but it halted a few miles south of Kambula and formed up for an attack. Kambula's defences. The defences on Kambula consisted of a hexagonal lager formed with wagons that were tightly locked together, and a separate kraal for the cattle, constructed on the edge of the southern face of the ridge. Trenches and earth parapets surrounded both sections, and a stone-built redoubt had been built on a rise just north of the kraal. A palisade blocked the hundred yards between the kraal and redoubt while four seven-pounders were positioned between the redoubt and the lager to cover the northern approaches. Two more guns in the redoubt covered the northeast. Two companies were sighted in the redoubt, another company occupied the cattle kraal and the remaining infantry manned the lager. The gunners had been told that if the Zulus got in close they were to abandon the guns and make for the lager. In all, Wood's force mustered 121 Royal Artillery and Royal Engineers, 1,238 infantry and 638 mounted men. With headquarters staff, it totaled 2,000 men, of whom 88 were sick in hospital. Battle. At 12.45 on 29 March 1879, the tents were struck, reserve ammunition was distributed, and the troops took up their battle stations. As the troops moved to their posts they could see the Zulu right horn, circling north out of British artillery range before halting northwest of the camp. The left horn and centre of the Empire continued westwards until they were due south of Kambula. At 1.30, Lieutenant Colonel Redvers Henry Buller suggested his mounted troops sting the right horn into premature attack, which was agreed to. The men rode out to within range of the massed Zulus, fired a volley and then galloped back, closely followed by a great wave of 11,000 Zulu warriors. As soon as the horsemen had reached Kambula and cleared the field of fire, the British infantry opened fire with support from their four seven-pounders firing shell, and then when the Zulus got closer canister shot, a small number of Zulus managed to burst into the lager and were repelled with bayonets, while the bulk of the advance was held at bay by the steady British rifle shots and gunfire. Some of the Zulu force swung right to come in against the western sides of the lager, but were met with equally effective resistance. After about half an hour the Zulu right horn drew back to the northeast. At 2.15, as the right horn made its withdrawal, the left horn and centre surged up out of the ravine. 
their leading warriors falling to crossfire from the Lager and Kral as they came over the crest. However, more and more swarmed onto the glassy between the cliff and the defenders, funneling into the gap between the Kral and Lager. The Zulus soon forced their way into the cattle Kral and fought hand-to-hand -hand with men of the 1-13th Company. The cattle in the Kral hampered both sides. But with Zulu pressure mounting up the heavily outnumbered British troops managed to extricate themselves and pull back to the redoubt. Zulu riflemen were now able to open fire from behind the walls of the kraal to give their advancing comrades cover. At about this time the right horn came on again from the northeast, charging across the north face of the redoubt towards the guns and the eastern sides of the lager, although now attacked on both sides. Wood appreciated that the situation to the south was critical and ordered two companies to clear the Zulus off the glassy. Led by Major Hackett, the men formed in line with bayonets fixed and charged across the open ground, forcing the Zulus back over the rim. The troops then lined the crest and opened volley fire into the packed warriors in the ravine. The counter-attack had succeeded perfectly but Hackett's men suddenly found themselves under fire from their right where Zulu marksmen had concealed themselves in a refuse pit. Hackett sounded the retire and his men returned to the cover of the lager, but not before losing a color sergeant, a subaltern and himself receiving a blinding head wound. The sight of this withdrawal encouraged the Zulus in the ravine to charge again, but along the narrow killing zone in front of the lager they could not this time prevail against the controlled volleys from behind the wagons and the redoubt. The Zulus charged again and again, with unwavering courage, but the head of each charge was shot away and at about 5 p.m. would sense the impetus was going out of their attack. Two companies moved to clear the kraal and lined the rim of the cliff with a further company to fire into the dead ground. As soon as the Zulus began to pull away eastwards Woods ordered Buller, the commander of his mounted troops, to mount his men up and pursue. The Zulus were harried mercilessly for seven miles, mounted troops firing one-handed with carbines from the saddle or spearing them with discarded assegais. Cecil Darcy of the Frontier Light Horse told his troopers to take no prisoners and told them, no quarter boys and remember yesterday, referring to the action at Lobain, where his men had suffered severely. The FLH men singled Abaclalusi warriors for their special attention, chasing them as far as Lobain and extracting a savage revenge for their comrades killed the day before at Lobain. Darcy recalled that they butchered the brutes, Zulus, all over the place while Buller was like a tiger drunk with blood. Following the cavalry, the British infantry and African auxiliaries combed the field killing any wounded or hiding Zulus. The merciless pursuit of the retreating Zulu army at Kambula caused some controversy in Britain itself but from a military point of view it had presented an invaluable opportunity to inflict crippling losses on the Zulu army. Results A total of 785 Zulu dead were counted in the immediate vicinity of the camp by burial parties two days after the battle, but their total loss is significantly higher. Laban states the Zulu losses are a matter of some debate. Knight says 785 bodies were collected from close by the camp. Many more lay out on the line of retreat where the slaughter had been heaviest. Perhaps as many as 2,000 died, while Colenso states 1,000. Some of the dead had been carried away by friends or relatives but had to be abandoned during the pursuit. Many more warriors retreating from the battle were overtaken and killed by British mounted troops and furthermore, many wounded warriors died before they could reach home and help. The following day 157 bodies were counted along the line of retreat with reports of more in the distance. The official British estimation at the time put the total Zulu losses of dead and wounded at nearly 2,000, while the Zulus thought that their casualties were at least as high or higher than those suffered at Isndlwana. The morale effect of the Battle of Kambula on the Zulu army was also severe. Their commander, Mumana, tried to get the regiments to return to Irulandi but many demoralized warriors simply went home. 
The shock of the defeat contributed to a weakening of the Zulu resolve to maintain armed resistance to the British invasion. By contrast to the heavy Zulu losses, only 18 British soldiers were killed, and 8 officers and 57 men wounded, 11 of whom later died. Kambula is considered as the turning point of the war, for the British demonstrated that Shield and Asagai were no match for an entrenched force with artillery and the Martini Henry. Never again would an impi fight against a prepared position with the ferocity and resolution displayed up to this date. Bibliography Barthorpe, Michael. The Zulu War. Isn't one at Lundy. Weidenfeld and Nicholson. ISBN 0-304-36270-0. Brooks, Edgar H. Webb, Colin B. A History of Natal. Brooklyn. University of Natal Press. ISBN 0-86980-579-7. Colenso, Francis E. History of the Zulu War and Its Origin. Assisted by Edward Durnford. London. Chapman and Hall. David Saul. The Forgotten Battles of the Zulu War. BBC History Magazine 10. pp. 26-33. Gump James O. The Dust Rose Like Smoke. The Subjugation of the Zulu and the Sioux. Bison Books. ISBN 0-8032-7059-3. Laband, John. Historical Dictionary of the Zulu Wars. Scarecrow Press. ISBN 0-8108-6078-3. Laband, John. Knight, Ian. The Anglo-Zulu War. Stroud, Sutton. ISBN 0-86985-829-7. Laband, John. Kingdom in Crisis. The Zulu Response to the British Invasion of 1879. Manchester University Press. ISBN 0-71903-582-1. Martineau, John. The Life and Correspondence of the So Bartle Frere. John Murray. Morris, Donald R. The Washing of the Spears. Da Capo Press. ISBN 0-306-80866-8. Knight, Ian. Castle, Ian. Zulu War 1879. Twilight of a Warrior Nation. Osprey. ISBN 1-85532-1653. Knight, Ian. The Anglo-Zulu War. Osprey. ISBN 1-84176-612-7. Raw, Harold E. Jr. Anglo-Zulu War 1879. A Selected Bibliography. Scarecrow Press Press. ISBN 0-8108-7227-7. Thompson, Paul Singer. Black Soldiers of the Queen, the Natal Native Contingent in the Anglo-Zulu War, University of Alabama Press, ISBN 0-8173-5368-2, Spears, Edward M., The Scottish Soldier and Empire, 1854-1902, Edinburgh University Press, ISBN 978-0-7486-2354-9.